What if the way you've been telling your life story reveals the secret to what is holding you back? Stories play an integral part in how we see not only ourselves, but the whole world. Stories are more than just an important part of communication. They also reveal hidden aspects of our inner talk, which can either support us or end up holding us back from the very things we want most in life without us even realizing it. Join author, mindset coach, and award-winning singer-songwriter Carrie Rowan on her show, Look for the Good, every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. when she shares nuggets of wisdom from her internationally best-selling book, Tell a New Story, Five Simple Steps to Release Your Negative Stories and Bring Joy to Your Life. Carrie's powerful stories and compelling guests will empower you to change how you look at your own life while giving you some powerful tools and tips you can use every day to help you feel better and move yourself closer to the life you've been longing to live. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to Look for the Good. I'm your host, Carrie Rowan, mindset strategist and coach, and I love sharing stories and nuggets of wisdom about the stories that we tell each other, and more importantly, ourselves, those quiet little stories that we tell. You can join me and my special guests as we share our personal stories of strength and triumph every week here on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, and you can listen online on your mobile device or Ask Alexa to play Dream Vision 7 Radio and tune in every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern to get real stories and tips on how to turn your story and your life around and evolve with us as we unite humankind with universal love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Look for the Good. I'm super excited. We have Jessica waiting in the wings. Hello, Jessica. Hi. <laughs> Super excited. I can't wait to get talking with Jessica. We have so much to talk about. And one of the things that I love talking about, you guys know I love talking about stories, but really specifically today, we're going to talk about that health story, right? Because we all have one, whether or not you're aware of it, you've got this little story you say to yourself about your health. And here's the thing, that body is always listening and the mind is always listening. So whatever we're saying to it, it is listening and it is helping us make that become a truth, right? So I want you to think about that. What is your health story? Like, is there something you say to yourself? And I'll use this example because I know we all know people like this. Do you ever meet somebody who's like, oh, yes, I have this bad cold because this is the time of year I always get my cold, right? Or they say something like, oh, when the weather changes, that's always when my fill in the blank, right? My annual cold, my stomach thing happens. Or another really popular one that I hear is, Oh, when I'm super stressed, fill in the blank. This is what happens to my body. I break out or I start eating everything in the cabinet. So there's always a little something, but a lot of times we don't know what that little story is that we tell. And the other interesting thing I think about our health stories, because what we keep telling that body is true. Uh, I'm so fat. I'm so oh, fill in the blank, right? I can never get this or my hair always looks like this or fill that in because your body is always listening. Your mind is picking up on every single thing that you are saying to it. So when I get really stressed, I often blank. That's a biggie because what you're telling yourself is let's do this again. Let's do this again next time I'm stressed, right? So you're reinforcing what you don't want. So be really careful. That's why I love studying stories. And I wrote a whole book about it because it's in those stories that contain the direct message that we give to ourselves about what is true. But then again, we, we don't ever ask ourselves, why do I keep telling that story? that story that I don't like, that story that keeps coming true because I say, hey, I always do this or this always happens to me. So I want you to start to get really careful and pay attention, get curious and listen to yourself about the stories that you tell because there is so much gem of wisdom in those stories. You will find out so much about what is going on in that subconscious mind of yours. And when you can start to catch them, and ask yourself, hey, is this a loving story? Do I want to tell the story? Hey, do I want this to be true any longer? And if the answer to that is all no, then start to pay attention, write it down, get really curious. So only when you start to catch the, capture them, can, do you have the choice to say, mm, do I want to keep this or do I want to rewrite it into a new and empowering story that celebrates who I want to be, who I can be, who I was meant to be 
instead of this default story that somehow got planted in my brain before I was even seven years ago old. So do I really want to keep selling that same story that is so old and stuck on repeat? So these are the things I want you guys to think about. Um, and I'm super excited because my guest, Jessica, and I were on the phone talking about Wow, we had so much in common that I was like, we could have a two-hour show on this. <laughs> so Jessica, welcome. I'm super excited to tell everybody all about you. You mind if I read your bio? Please, I'd be honored. <laughs> okay, so um, Jessica's a functional diagnostic nutritional practitioner and owner and founder of Rebalance Your Routine, a virtual coaching service that helps improve gut health and detoxification by using functional labs and making holistic modifications to diet and lifestyle. I love what you do, Jessica, because you know it's super close to my heart because I, I'm into a lot of the functional medicine stuff. So thank you so much for coming on to share your wisdom with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and as one of the things we spoke about is we all have these stories about why we do the things we do. And I loved your story, right? Because a lot of times us entrepreneur types, us creative types, we start a business based on our own personal struggle, right? A, a question that we needed answered in our own lives. And I love that because that is so true for you. You have a very personal story about how you got started in this business and in this line of work. So I'd love for you to share that with everybody who's listening today. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. So I like to be very direct and just jump right in. <laughs> Absolutely. I love your style. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's do it. So um, I usually start my my story um, about how I got into functional medicine and helping people heal um, in 2015. So in October of 2015, I had a traumatic brain injury. And this was an injury that happened um, at my day job when I was playing with kids, right? Kind of kind of a weird situation. And, and I had ended up um, hitting my running head first and hitting my my head into a brick wall. Oh, and I hit it very, very hard. Um, and I had gone to the the ER afterwards to make sure that I didn't, you know, crack my skull. And I mean, I, I was literally afraid when I was at the hospital. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave, you know, or if I was going to know who I was later on that day, like it was that type of, of fear from the accident. And, you know, I got very lucky. The test came back. Um, okay. They did the CAT scan. There was no, you know, bleeding in my brain. And the doctors asked me a couple questions. They just said, um, I'll never forget who's the president of the United States and how many quarters does it take to make a dollar 50? And I answered those questions correctly. And they were just like, okay, Jessica, you're fine. You can go home. Right. So I go home um, and I lost my health uh, pretty, pretty, pretty quickly after the brain injury. I had lost my health. And just to give some context at the time of the injury, I was a competitive athlete. I actually was a competitive boxer. And I know it might. That's why I always like to say I hit my head when I was playing with kids, not through boxing. Right. <laughs> Which some and, might think, right? <laughs> right. And um, and also to defend boxing. If I wasn't a boxer, I think that the shock of the injury would have killed me because when I got hit in the head, I went into boxer mode and I was like, I'm okay. I'm good. You know, and I, I went right into fighter mode and I was strong. My body was strong. My neck was strong. So I, I attribute to surviving the head injury because I was a competitive athlete. Wow. I was eating healthy. I was able to obviously manage my weight because I was fighting in weight classes. Mm -hmm. So after the head injury, um, you wouldn't have thought besides headaches, one of the first thing that started to to go in terms of health um, was my GI function and was weight gain, wow. um, unexplained, consistent weight gain. Mm -hmm. And like every time I stepped on nothing after the head injury, after some time of resting, I was still eating the same. I slowly got back to doing, you know, my, my exercising. And I'm just like, wait a second. I'm like really bloated all the time to the point where I'm struggling to eat. I'm feeling nauseous, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not able to fit in my clothes. I'm having tons of gas. And I, you know, I try to talk about it lightheartedly, <laughs> you know, but I mean, a lot of people come to me because they're like, look, like I'm having gas and I'm farting all the time and I can't like go to yoga class or I can't go to work. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, 
Yeah. It can really disrupt your life when you have uncontrollable gas, right? Sure. <laughs> um, we can but, talk about that gas story. <laughs> yeah, like I said, listen, I'm open. I like to keep it real with people. Um, and just being able to eat foods, I developed yeah. food sensitivities and the weight went up and up and up. And I'm like, what, like, what is happening to my body? What is happening to it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I started going from doctor to doctor to doctor um, over a couple of years, exhausting my insurance, going from specialist, food allergist, gastroenterologist, even a sports nutritionist. Everybody got all the tests done. Wow. They all came back and they're just like, Jessica, you're fine. They're like, you're fine. It's just stress. Take some. They literally told me, take some anti anxiety medications and antidepressants, wrote me a prescription and pushed me out the door. Wow. And it was actually scary in terms of how adamant they were that like, that is it. That is the solution. Just totally dismissed me. Wow. Um, and I knew that, that there was, there was an explanation. I knew that there was actually a scientific, a scientific explanation that there was something, there was a disconnect in my body, um, after the head injury. And so it took me about three years before I came across functional medicine and started understanding what was happening in my body and why I was gaining weight and having all these digestive issues post TBI. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, I, I got into functional medicine. I started working um, with somebody who helped me. And as I worked with people along the way to help me, I started studying along the way because I saw that this was a very serious thing I was handling and I needed to understand what was happening in my body so mm -hmm. I could. Help. Absolutely. So then I started taking courses, getting certifications, um, you know, training with the top SIBO doctors in the world because what well, I found out that I had had something called SIBO, which stands for small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and traumatic brain injury can be a root cause for SIBO because it damages that vagus nerve, right? That, mm. can, that the, the base of the skull connects into the organ sending messages back and forth. Um, so that's kind of how I, I got into um, functional medicine. And then, you know, over the years, like I said, I acquired the education and the knowledge and I said, you know, this is my life. This is a lifelong journey where I will always be learning to keep myself well, and I am committed to it. Therefore, I want to help other people. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. I don't love what happened to you, of course, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love that you took it on, uh, took it upon yourself. You found something else. you didn't buy into the rhetoric of the, you know, normal Western medicine. Um, you took it a step further and you took matters into your own hands, right? right? I think a lot of times that's the point where people go, it's depressing in and of itself. The answer yeah. that you got, never mind the antidepressant and all that stuff. They just want to fill you with pills, right? It's scary. Yeah. Really scary. Cause a lot of people yeah. at that point would have given up. They would have yes. given up, yes. right? But you're a fighter. So you're not, you don't give up. A hundred percent. And it was, I, I actually, I, I did feel fear in, in the conventional medicine um, office when I was with a doctor, like they were so strong about it that I, I, and I regrettably took the piece of paper because I felt so scared. Sure. I took the piece of paper, the prescription. And I was like, okay, I left and I didn't fill it. But I mean, it, I mean, it was literally like they were twisting my arm and trying to tell me this is the only, this is the only thing that will help you at this point. Yeah, Isn't it was that amazing <laughs> <laughs> when we know it's not. And then right. on the flip side of that is functional steps, functional medicine, where functional medicine understands the root cause. That's, That's not it. the way we do medicine in this country. We don't care about the root <laughs> cause. We just band aid it with treat symptoms. And yeah. trust me, you know, I, I'm a big believer in that. There's a place for every, for that type of medicine exactly. at all periods of time. When you went to the emergency room, right? Yes. When there's yes. an emergency. Um, but really when you have something that becomes chronic, that you can't get to the root cause, that's where functional medicine really steps in and does a exactly. beautiful job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I always tell people too. Cause I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing conventional medicine. Um, they have their time, they have their place. That's always what I tell people. Cause yeah. if you break a bone, if you need stitches, if you're in a dire situation, you need to go to the ER or go to a conventional medicine doctor. You're not going to hit up your functional medicine doctor and be like, Hey, I just got like sliced with a knife. I need, I need stitches. Exactly. Um, but you're right. Like they're just trying to match the symptoms of the pharmaceutical 
Whereas in functional medicine, we are trying to look at the whole body and understand where are these imbalances coming from? Yeah. Right. And, and, and how can we get the, the body back into a balanced state and develop resiliency? Right. Yeah, That's absolutely. We because we have, it has the power to heal itself. Let's get it back yes. to homeostasis. Yes. Let's get a ground zero because yes. once we do that, we know that the body has the power. We are a veritable chemical factory. We really don't yes. need all those outside chemicals. If we can clear the pathways, you know, but a lot of times, especially we talked about the gut brain connection. Yeah. When that gut is all clogged up, it can't send all those good feeling hormones back up. So it is true that you didn't probably have a lot of the serotonin and the good feeling hormones, right? Yeah. Because your stomach goes off. But once you clear that root cause, yeah. then your body autom- it just wants to go back to what it knows yeah. how to do best, right? Yeah. Which is to yeah. feel good. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's hard. Like the, the body is capable of healing itself, right? It, it absolutely is. But I think you have to believe that like yeah. that is, that is the first step. It's a that, mindset. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the first step is that you genuinely have to believe that I can find answers for this. I'm going to find answers for this. I can find answers for this. I will get better. And yes. it has to be something that you, you have on repeat yeah. in your mind, even when, and it's tricky because you can have doctor, you can have your conventional doctor looking at you in your face and tell you there is no other solution for this. And you have to be able to stay confident and true to yourself and, mm-hmm. and say, you know what, there, there is a solution. There's an answer. I'm going to find it. And sometimes family members can, can do the same thing and coworkers and even your partner, you know, people can, can not be supportive or not believe you. And that's where it gets really challenging because you still have to have the confidence to look within and to say, you know what, like, I'm going to find answers for this. And I think that's the hardest part of the mm-hmm. healing process mm-hmm. is that is, is getting past that right? Because once, once you believe you can heal and you're going to heal, then the things start to come to you, right? It's just like, then you start to attract um, solutions and different people to come to you. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's, it's like this cycle, like you started off with opening the show. It's like a story. You tell yourself you have to put it on breaks and put it in reverse and say, no, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to go towards the path of getting better and learning how to take responsibility for my health because that's what I want and that's what I deserve, right? I love that, yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. Yeah, because it's the want. Like I said, we get stuck telling these stories. We don't realize we don't have to keep doing that. And when you can come up with a little mantra, like you said, I love that. I call it a mantra. Yeah. I can help. I can heal myself. My body has the power to heal myself. I believe in my body. Absolutely. Whatever works for you, because everybody's got something different, but you have to believe it. Yes. And then you have to remind yourself in those moments when it gets difficult and you do feel that fear because that's, you know, just the way it's done. Yeah. Um, to get past it because I just had somebody on the show recently and they, you know, all her doctors said she had this super rare thing that nobody's, she is never, sorry, you just, we're never going to be able to find a solution for it. Crazy. A 100% healthy today. So, so I don't believe, I don't think doctors should be able to say that, but even if you get that sort of a thing, always believe there are more solutions for yourself. And I love what you just said about taking responsibility for digging in to find out what else could be possible here? Yes. What else was another solution that I have not even looked at? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love getting under the covers with functional medicine because you're going to do blood work and tests that you would not yeah. normally be asked to do um, at the conventional doctor. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. About, about functional testing. Yeah. Like just yeah. like you're, you're looking for stuff that and and the other thing you said was the holistic piece, right? You're looking yes. for connections yes. and things that aren't functioning properly throughout the whole body instead of just my arm or my leg. Right, <laughs> right, right. Ex- exactly. Because the thing is, is it's, there are so many different parts that, that we're made up of and so many parts that need to work together in order to heal. So yes, the functional labs are so helpful, but they're not going to work if you don't have the basics under control. Mm. And, you know, the basics really being that we have a good mindset, um, that our stress levels are low because we can't heal when we're in a constant state of stress that we're eating clean. You gotta be eating organic and clean foods. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very anti-alcohol. 
Um, I don't drink at all. And so I always am telling people either reduce or just stop drinking alcohol because there's really no benefit to it. It's going to be hard to heal if you are drinking a lot of alcohol, mm. um, sleep. And um, I'm going to go back to the functional medicine piece, but I do just want to acknowledge in the same breath, the importance of yeah. uh, creative expression um, mm. and, just, and just having that as an outlet for aiding in in, in the healing process, right? I love that. You have to have some type of an activity or hobby that um, gives you some separation between your your chronic illness or ongoing symptoms, so you can just be present and and not and just have something that gives you pleasure. That's such an important piece of healing that they're never going to talk about that in conventional medicine and not even every functional medicine practitioner will discuss that. You know, having a hobby, having yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have to make you money guys not everything has to make you money but it has to bring you peace that it has to make you it has to bring you happiness um but just going back to functional labs um i think getting you know gi maps like a, a stool test is one that i i run all the time with my clients and i think that's a really helpful one just looking at an overview of the gut microbiome and, and seeing you know what what's happening are there parasites? Is there candida, which is becoming much more common? And people are, are now starting to say, oh, candida, I think I have candida. Mm. Um, but I do want to use this spotlight right now to just mention mold exposure. Yeah. And I know that's probably not on a lot of people's radars when they, th when they think about mental health, when they think about weight gain or weight loss, when they think about hormonal issues or autoimmune conditions. And I just want everybody to take very, very close attention to the significance of mold exposure. And that is a functional lab that I think is so helpful for people because mold exposure drives so many chronic illnesses. And that is something that conventional medicine will miss. Like you could get diagnosed with all these different autoimmune conditions or like I said, hormonal imbalances or SIBO. And they're never going to say, hey, you might want to look for mycotoxins in the body that are that are the driver of this. And when you detox or move out of a moldy home or leave a moldy job or whatever, then your symptoms will relinquish. And that is often what happens with people when they realize that they've had mold exposure and there's mold in their body. That's a big part of my story too. Wow. I, my story is, is long, so I can't, I can't get into <laughs> everything. I have to just pick a few things. Um, but I, I just, anybody that's dealing with any type of ongoing mysterious symptom, yeah. like get a functional, get a test for mold, get a urine test for mold. <laughs> yes. I just did that with my youngest daughter, the mycotoxin test. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And they did the candida and everything. And it is, it's so interesting. You think in mold, well, yeah, I don't work in like a factory or something, but you just, yep. you don't know all that has to do is something got wet one time and it's in your ceiling or that's right. You don't know, a, you know, you're renting a place and you have no idea, you know, that's right. what's that's in right. that building uh, or work. A lot of times it's a work situation yep. or somebody has got a moldy air conditioner that blows air on you. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And people, people don't think like that because we're not taught to think like that. Right. Yeah. We're not, we, these are things we should be taught in, in schools, or there should be like a basic course or something. Cause we would be saving so much money on, on healthcare stuff and improving the quality of our life. If we were just aware of, of mold and it's in, it's in like 50% of, of how the, the percentage is, is just increasing yeah. all the time, Absolutely. right? Cause it can be in the HVAC system. And so people mm. don't have a connection a lot that it can be something, there can be flooding in the basement, but then the HVAC is spreading spores throughout the house. Yes. Um, and it, you don't even have to have that musty smell, but uh, you know, if, if there is a musty smell, that's a strong indication that there is mold growth that's present but there doesn't have to be a musty smell. That's what can throw people off. Yeah. So any, anytime, I'm glad you ran your a test for your daughter. That's a, that was a very smart. <laughs> yeah, it's just because there's so many things. And when you're trying yeah. to uncover what's going on, yep. um, you know, but I love the way you set the stage really, because it really, you have to peel it back to yourself first to, and prioritize, okay, what's going on with my mind? How am I thinking yeah. about this? Am I in yeah. fear? The stress piece. Yes. We know that 80, 85% of everybody coming to the doctor is a stress related issue. Yes. 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 You know, but, but, but again, what kind of stress is it? Cause we yeah. say stress and like people, I think 
tend to just go right to, oh, I'm, I don't, I don't have stress at my job. I don't feel stressed. Yeah. But the stress can be physical stress from an exposure to a mm, toxin or a absolutely. pathogen in the body. So absolutely. you're stressed on a, on a cellular level, right? Absolutely. And, and that still is communicating the same information to your brain. Even if you're not thinking I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. If for example, there's mold in your system that mm. is stressing your body. Wow. Right? Wow. Okay. Listen, I, I went over our time, but we're going to break for, <laughs> because we have so much good stuff. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back and talk right about this stress in your body issue. Hold tight, everyone. We'll be right back with Jessica. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Look for the Good. I'm here with Jessica. And this conversation is amazing. We were just talking about the stress and the stress. Are, how does it affect our bodies, right? Like how does, because even when you have exposure to say mold, like we were talking about, that can tell your body, hey, I'm stressed out. So it's going to appear as if it's stressing with these different symptoms. What can people do about it? Talk a little bit more about that, because I think that might be something new that people are just hearing for the first time. Yeah. And it's, you know, it is, complex. So we have to try to simplify. Um, so when, when, when we're trying to reduce stress, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different approaches and one is, is to go the science route, right. Where we're looking for, is there any pathogens or constant sources of, of toxins that we're being mm -hmm. exposed to stressing the body? So that's one way is we can do use those functional labs and see, is there any thing that, that's inside the body causing stress? And then obviously removing ourselves from that source or starting to detox the body and remove those toxins. That's one way that we can reduce stress. Um, another mm -hmm. way of reducing stress, uh, let's see, there's so many different ways. I like the creativity component, which I think is, is such an important part of, of stress reduction. Um, Yes, you know, mindfulness is really important. Yes, doing breath work and even, um, you know, vagus nerve exercises as we kind of started out, out this, this conversation about hitting the head, damaging the vagus nerve, then having GI issues. Yes. Um, so we want to make sure that our body stays predominantly in a parasympathetic state so that we can be nice and, and relaxed. And so one of the things that I've found to help me heal um, is having hobbies and in, in various forms of creative expression. Mm. And in those activities is oftentimes the only time when I wouldn't think about my symptoms, right? Mm, so right. so when, when I was really struggling with my health at low points, and you know, that cycle was just like on a negative loop, the only times where it would break would be when I was painting, right? Or where mm. where I was, you know, maybe I was I was as at the gym. Um, whatever your hobby is, some people have multiple things. And I think it's fantastic to have, I, I always say three things. If you have something where you're developing your intellectual um self, your mm -hmm. your creative artistic self, and then a, a physical hobby, I think that that I think you are just on a road to having the the best version of yourself. Sometimes they can be combined into one thing, right? Because you could get like dance, for example, which is like a combination of art and it is a sport. So you're kind of getting both in there. A two for one. Um, a two right, for one. There, you, there you go. <laughs> um, so so I, I think that that's a fantastic example where you're tapping yeah. into like the different sides of you. Yeah. Uh, but some sometimes we don't have the energy or sometimes when we have a lot of symptoms or we're chronically ill, we may not even have the energy to go work out. So our creative expression may be limited to writing or to something like knitting. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it was painting and drawing. Mm -hmm. And I found that when I was really struggling in my health, when I would paint and draw, it was like tunnel vision, like nothing else existed except for just moving the paint and feeling the color. And yeah. in those moments, that's when my body was able to relax and and then I'm sending the signals now to my brain. Everything's okay. Yeah, we're I'm all right. Yeah. We're safe, right? We're safe. We're, we're good. safe. And yeah. you're in that flow, right? That's that loss of time. That's that in the tunnel. It's like when I'm writing a new yeah. song, I've got a night gem of an idea yeah. and I'm at the piano or my guitar yes. and I'm just in that flow. Two hours, three hours yes. could flow by. It's exactly. not like you're working. You're like, oh God, what time yeah. is it? Right. You're just yeah. 
in that flow. Exactly. And think about your body is totally yep. in that flow as well. You are connecting, call it whatever you want to that yes. universal creative energy. Yes. And it's running through your body, which is absolutely the most healing thing that you really could do. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So you, I mean, you, you know, firsthand you live it. And that's why you're, you're, you've created this podcast because you're doing all of these things and spreading this message, the importance of having creativity to ground you, to reduce stress, but on a level that's so deep that we don't talk about it enough where it has power to align the body to reverse chronic illness. In fact, I really feel that without having creative expression and hobbies, that a lot of people won't be able to get out of that place. Um, mm -hmm. because, because the body is going to be stuck that the cells are now, I, I mean, I've been learning lately about cell danger response, where when we're in a place of chronic illness for so long that the body starts to function differently, right? Yeah. It, it, because it doesn't feel safe anymore. It, right. it always feels that that it's under attack, that there's a threat. And one of the ways that we can kind of start to peel it back so we can feel good is to do is, is to have these hobbies where we're totally present and where we're not associating with symptoms or, or, or chronic illness. And those are life saving things. And that's only yeah. something that you can figure out for yourself. And, and maybe that's where people... I, I don't know if that's where people struggle to figure out what is my creative thing? What is my hobby? Because yeah. a doctor can't tell you. And yeah. even, even as a practitioner or, you know, as um, in, in the position of leadership, we can't tell you what to do for creative expression. Right. It's something that you have to be vulnerable to open up, to take a yeah. chance and, and then try and, and see yourself in, in that creative process. So but true. It's, it's when right? It's one of the yeah. most important risks most in life. Important. Yeah. Yes, right? it's, it is a risk because yeah. it's, it's a vulnerability, like you're yes. saying, however, in a really great, great way, because what you're really doing is you're interrupting that pattern. That's what you're talking yes. about. The cell danger yep. response. You're yep. interrupting Like if you've ever been in chronic pain before, you know, something happened and you're in so much pain, you've got to do something to interrupt that because you, yes. the body does, it keeps getting stuck in this yes. loop, right? So you're interrupting yes. it. You know, and to address the the question of what to do, like you said, that you really only know. However, it's interesting as women, we forget what we love because we're usually we're caretakers, right? We're the gatherers, you know, um, and so we're always focused on what other people's needs are and making a lot of other people around us comfortable, whether that's in our family of origin, our new families that we've created, whatever that is. So I find that really getting people to remember what they did as a child. There you is go. where that creative expression was so yep. rampant. It was so natural, natural, we, right? We just did it. We don't know why we did it. I used to put on shows for anybody who would, who would come to the house, my grandparents, friends, my friends, you know, whoever was there, my parents' friends for dinner, I'm putting on a show for them. I don't know why I did that. Uh, <laughs> right. It was just one mm -hmm. of those things. And maybe yeah. cause it was the performer in me. Right. Right. So I always, you know, coach my clients to just go back and make a list of what it is that you love because you yep. forgot what yep. did you do as a kid and yep. what do you absolutely love? Maybe it's making a cake. That's it. Yeah. You know, making somebody smile. Who knows? It yep. could be anything small and then just go branch off of that. Yep. It's, it's simplicity, right? Just, yes. just like, just simple because we, we, we overthinking really can, can just sustain the, the pattern and it yeah. is, it's hard to break it, you know? And, and I hear a lot of people say that all the time. Yes. I know my thoughts aren't helping me, but, but, I, but I can't, I can't help it. Mm. And we just, you just have to, you just have to do it. I mean, I've been in that place. I've been at that really, really low point before, um, and like, if you can get people past that, I think you can get them on a place of, of, of healing, right. Yeah. Of self care. Yeah. Cause that's all we're trying to do here is, is we just want people to, to learn how to take responsibility for their health yeah. and so that they can make the best choices possible for themselves moving forward. Right. And get educated on what is the, the lifestyle they need to live so that they can feel good, right? What yeah. are the exact foods they need to eat? What is, what does their schedule look like? Because it's different for everybody. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not like this cut and paste, you know, type of thing. Yeah, um, so true. Right. But it's so individualized. Absolutely. Yeah. Every yours is going to be different than mine, even though, yeah. you know, 
we understand the basics, but I think we, one thing you said that was so important, just want to touch on really quick before yeah, we yeah. go to a quick break, yeah. um, is really knowing, know thyself, right? That's the key yes. to anything yes. and really going back, um, to say, what is it for me? You know, what is it for me that lights me up and it yes. doesn't have to, and, and not overthinking it, you know, maybe yeah. you never were a painter as a kid, but you always dreamed about it or you were yeah. really good at, you know, fill in the blank, sewing, I don't know, yeah. whatever it was. Um, or you're just really good at making a beautiful meal and that is your creative expression. You love yep. to go get all the beautiful ingredients and you love to plate it and make it look really nice. So it can be that. It doesn't have to be. A lot of people think about drawing and I'm right. not any good at drawing yeah. or painting. Yeah. I might color because I like doing that. Maybe yeah. that's your thing, right? All these coloring books that are out. So fi right. really finding and be willing to experiment with different things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, th and then I think there's also some of us attach it to perfectionism and there yeah. might, and there might be fear about indulging in a creative process in the event that they're not good at it. And if they're not good at it, then they're going to, um, it's just the yes. same cycle of not feeling like they're <laughs> right. worth, but there's right. kind of like, when I, when we talk about creativity, I look at it, like there's kind of two ways to express yourself. One is that you can, um, get loose Right. So maybe if you're somebody that is a really tight thinker and is very type A, you may need a practice that is very loose so that you can just like let it go. Yeah. And then I love like that. on the contrary, where if you're somebody that is kind of like, oh, I'm like a little scatterbrain, maybe you need something, a, a creative practice that's going to help to train your brain to bring it in mm. something almost kind of meticulous and obsessing. I think of like sewing, you know, like you mentioned sure. like there's, yeah. or like knitting something where there's repetition and it's yeah. that brain, A path. Yeah. right. To follow. Brain. You yeah. can, and you can do both. You can, you can combine whatever it is that you need to, yeah. to, to, to complement your brain or, or and it, Absolutely. it, you know, it, it can be anything and it anything. doesn't have to follow any rules. It just has to feel good to you. You don't have Absolutely. to share it with other people. It could yeah. be your private little thing. It's your own little thing. <laughs> but it's, it's good for, for, for me. And it sounds like for you, it will, it will save your life. It totally will. I love that. We're going to stop real yeah. quick on that moment. I love that line. And we'll be back right back after word. <laughs> good. I was Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Look for the Good. I'm here with Jessica. We we're just giggling when we came back on. We have so much to talk about that we, we literally could just go on for a lot longer. But I thought it would be really important because one of the things you said was clean eating, right? We talked about the mindset, which is always the basic. You always start there for anything you're trying to change. But I feel like people get overwhelmed. They're like, oh, clean eating. I don't even know how to do I don't even know where to start. So I'm just, I'm just, you just put it off and put it off. Make it really easy. Tell the listeners three of the most important things to keep in mind when they're going to clean eat. Yeah. Um, this is su such an important topic. And I, I do see this a lot with clients where, where they feel very, very lost on, on where to start. Um, so let's try and simplify it. Um, yeah, I love that. So I do, um, everybody's diet is going to look a little bit differently. And I know that veganism is very trendy these days. Um, I was vegan for many years in the past, so I have had that experience and it's not a diet that I advocate. Um, I actually do see a lot of value in eating good quality animal protein. Um, I find that the vegan diet tends to be really, it just lacks, you know, the B vitamins, which we need the B12 for our mood and, and, you know, yeah. iron and protein, those things are really important. And I've personally gone without <laughs> eating those types of food and with the foods. And so I feel a big difference. Uh, but when we eat meat, I think it gets a bad reputation um, because a lot of the studies are done when eating conventional um, animal protein. So one thing we want to do is we want to go for grass fed meats. Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to go for organic chicken. Bell and Evans is my favorite brand Mine too. Mine okay. Too. Okay. Of course that's, that's a pretty easy one. Yeah. Um, and, uh, wild caught fish, um, how much, how frequently you eat it, that that's a, a separate thing. Some people need more protein than others, but I think starting with good quality animal protein, that's, one of the most important things you can get it frozen too. So that can be more cost effective grasslandbeef.com. You can order some stuff from there, but, uh, good quality animal protein. 
Mm, I love um, that. Second thing is we, when we talk about produce, getting in our fruits and vegetables, um, we really do want to aim for organic. Glyphosate is something that is used on conventional produce. And yeah. so uh, Roundup, for example, contains um, glyphosate and that's what they spray on conventional produce. And then obviously we end up eating the chemicals. There's a strong mm -hmm. correlation between the use of glyphosate and the correlation of um actually autism developing, you can, you can see it. Mm -hmm. So glyphosate will also disrupt the gut microbiome leading to all these other health issues, yeah. but oh my goodness, organic um, produce can be so expensive. So how do we know what to get organic? Um, what should we prioritize? If you go to the EWG, that's the website, it's ewg.org, the Environmental Working Group. They have a list that they publish every year called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. Yep. And they're going to let you know what is the, the most important produce to get organic and what stuff you could maybe get away with with purchasing um, conventional. So I think that's a really good place to to Great to place to yep. start. Yeah. And they have a little tiny plastic. I used to have one that goes on your shopping bag mm -hmm. and it just reminds you of what the dirty dozen is to there stay away go. from. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So you can bring it with you when you're shopping. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to talk about water quality. This is something Ooh. that gets overlooked. Water quality um, and quantity. So people tend to under consume water. Uh, which is really number one reason why people are constipated. You know, so many people are constipated and it's like, all right, are you drinking enough water? <laughs> right. It's always the first question. <laughs> right. And then, you know, people want to detox. A lot of the times they'll hit me up and be like, Jessica, I want to do a detox. And it's like, well, let's talk about water first, because that number one is going to help you detox. And then number two, is your water quality putting in more toxins into your body? Mm don't want to drink tap water. We just don't want to do it. There's so yeah. much junk in tap water today. And we have to be so mindful of all the plastics now. So all of these, you know, microplastics that are showing up and causing hormonal issues, fertility issues, you know, obesity, you know, BPA, all these things everywhere. If we can get a water filtration system like Pro One or Berkey, um, where we are filtering our water and storing it in glass containers. That's really the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. And to take it a step further, a lot of people don't think of this, is to getting a filter for your shower. Because when we, when we bathe, when we shower, our skin is absorbing all of the toxins in the mm -hmm. water. So, so, so water quality. So making sure that we were filtering the water or getting or purchasing high quality spring water that can work too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, so, and then filtering the, the shower so that you're, you're bathing in clean water. Um, those are three things I would just start there. Um, maybe start with one. And when you feel like you're comfortable, move on to the next one. And that first step, if it takes you a month to kind of switch over to, to grass fed, wild caught and organic chicken, then, then great, but build on it as opposed yeah. to feeling like I have to do all these things at once right now, or I'm a failure. It's like, no, take your time, <laughs> do one of them. And when, it, when you feel ready, then you build on and you move to the next one. Keep it I love simple. that. Yeah. <laughs> keep it, it. You have to make it simple for people because it does, it feels so overwhelming. There's so much to yeah. think about the yeah. eating and what am I thinking? What, what is my mind yeah. thinking about? You yeah. know, there's a lot in this whole scenario and I've done this for years. So for me, it comes as second nature. I've just always yeah. been really interested in it you know, learned about this stuff a long time ago. Um, you know, back when I was pregnant with my girls, like I couldn't find organic produce back then, Crazy. 20 years ago was Crazy. really hard to find, Never mind organic baby food and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah I had a jump start on it, but still, it, it still sometimes can be hard depending on where you are. And I also love the idea of buying local, if not organic, then local. There you go. I I'm like that a lot. Yeah, that's that's very important to acknowledge. Yeah, and that's becoming I feel harder and harder you know, to get stuff local. Right. With the problem with all the farms in this country, but yeah. we have an incredible local farm in my town. So nice. I really like to support them. And I, oh, I mean, they're and their lettuce is yeah. like literally picked. It'll be warm sometimes from the sun when you go to get that's it. It's amazing. And one more thing I want to add to is that is that when you go to these places to get the local produce, um, a lot of the times it is grown organically, but 
they don't use that USDA seal because that costs so much money Got to get it. certification. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's a great idea to remind people, go to a farmer's market and mm -hmm. ask them because they might not legally be able to advertise organic. But when you ask them, you know, do you use glyphosate? Like, what do you use on your produce? They can tell you. So it might actually be quote unquote organic. And then you're not going to pay the price of it because- yeah they haven't had to pay for that USDA certification, right? That's a brilliant comment. Absolutely. Especially yeah. with like our apple, we have an apple uh, orchard right up the street here yeah. and they use that pest management system where they're not spraying. They're using that little fake apple thing that draws yeah. all the little pests in. <laughs> and that's another way, but they can't say they're an organic apple farm. Imagine what yeah. that would cost them, right? Right, so, right. It, right. It's great to ask people. And I love going to a farmer's market. Everything looks so beautiful. And yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a conversation. It's understanding what, it, what you're asking, what you're looking for and what you need. So I love that. That's really great. Yeah. And simplifying, you have a great way of really simplifying, talking about the facts and here's what it is and then making it easy for people. Um, so talk a little bit about when you have a new client, what is the first thing that you teach them to go after in terms of this? Is it the mindset that you still focus on as the first piece when you're trying to break this down for them um, and, and come up with a program for them to help them get better and feel a little bit better yeah, every day? Right, right. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, first we have to assess, um, you know, where, where are you at with your health right now? And, um, and, you know, for some people, if they don't have the right mindset, that will actually tell me that they're not ready to do the work because I can't teach you the mindset, yeah. right? You know, you, you have to, I want to take people that are at a place where they're saying, I'm ready to yeah. do the work. I just need some guidance because exactly. I'm not going to, I'm not going to heal you. I'm not a doctor. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some education. I will give you guidance and accountability, mm -hmm. but you have an, an open mind. And so it, it tends to vary from, from person to person. So a lot of people come to me and they already have done the clean eating and they have a pretty good routine intact. Mm -hmm. So at this point, they're just kind of like, well, you know, why am I not, what's the problem? Why am what's I not missing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why am I not feeling good? Um, so it, it, it's a very individualized process and, 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 then we'll bring in the functional labs if they have the basics that are down. But the creative piece does tend to miss a lot from people. And so I always want to coach them through what are you doing for fun? Yes, you're not feeling good. You know, yes, you're struggling with some symptoms. You know, I specialize in SIBO and digestive wellness. Yes, those things are bothering you. What did you do for fun this week? You know, when I send out my my weekly check in during a ninety day program, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the questions. What was the best part of your week? Right? What did you do for fun? Um, yeah. and, and you know, and just remembering that we have to make time for those things while we are healing. Right? Absolutely. It, it's it's a balance. It's that's why I call my my practice rebalance your routine because we have to establish that balance. We have to get it back. But that is something that I find that does consistently kind of kind of drop down is mm -hmm. just that creative piece, that self-expression, right? I love that. It's so, it, it is, especially for women. It is just something that we forget to do <laughs> yeah. for ourselves. And we forget how important it is because we yeah. get so stressed out and, and everything in this world is grabbing for an external attention, right? And, um, yeah. and, and these darn phones of ours and all this stuff. And it's really just yeah. that it is, it, it gives all those things. It incorporates all those good things about taking a break from all that, yeah. but just shifting your focus over to what is something that makes me feel good. What's something that I would love to put back into my schedule and then making the time to get it in the schedule. It has to yep. be written in the schedule yep. or it's yep. not going to get done. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. We all know that. So yeah. tell everybody where can they find out more about you? Oh, and I want to mention that Jessica and I are both going to be at the Natural Living Expo, which is so up your alley. If you guys are listening to this and loving this, you got to go to the Natural Living Expo, which is on November 16th and 17th. And it is in Marlboro at um, the Royal Trade Plaza. And you're going to be speaking, right? Are you going to be one I of the am. 70 speakers? Awesome. I am. I'm very, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. Awesome. So health detoxification. Nice. So 
So, so just, we'll, we'll be talking about, about the basics, um, but, but really get it, really getting into the details about, about, about it. So I mm. hope you can come by and, um, get, get excited, get inspired. Right. Yeah. I love that. And it's included in the cost of your admission ticket, right? So you can go see any one of the 70. There's so many I'm talking to as well on Sunday. So many of these, um, amazing talks. There's so many, I always circle on my book, but I can't always yeah. get away from my booth to go to them all. Right. Uh, but, and you can find Jessica too. She'll have a booth there. There's all these incredible vendors. They have a healthy food court with a lot of yummy food. Mm -hmm. Um, and we hope you guys will come and, and visit us there. So you can find out more about the Natural Expo at uh, naturalexpo.org. And tell us, what is your website, Jessica? Where can they find you? Yeah, definitely. My website is called rebalanceyourroutine.com. Um, and I also am on Instagram. So that is my my full name is my Instagram handle. That's Jessica Legiro. Uh, if you guys have questions, you know, you can always shoot me a DM or an email and I offer free 15 minute consults if people want to just learn more about um, functional testing and just the different services that I offer. Um, I'm I'm always happy to, to chat with people and for a free consult. Awesome. And go to the show notes, guys, if you want any details, but I'm going to spell Jessica's name for you because we love to spell it because some people will just hear this on the radio yeah. and not see. So it's Jessica, like you would spell Jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A. And Legiro is L-I-G-G-E-R-O. So find her there. That's and right. thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on, Jessica. This has been an incredible high-powered conversation. <laughs> Seriously, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. I feel like we just started the show. I know. I can't believe our time is up. <laughs> so uh, I loved having you on. I know everybody's gleaned a lot of incredible information from you. And thank you for breaking it down into the simplistic. Um, and remember, everybody, if you want more details on the podcast, go sign up for my podcast uh, mailing list at carryrowan.com. Click on the tab that says podcast and get on that mailing list to find out the details, the stuff, the juicy stuff that we talk about between the segments, right, Jessica? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and remember everyone, it is never too late to live your best story. Be well. Thanks for tuning in to Look for the Good with your host, Carrie Rowan, best-selling author and mindset coach. Join us every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. right here at Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. If you weren't able to catch an episode, no worries. Just visit our website to find all the archived episodes of Look for the Good on Demand so you don't miss a thing. And remember, it's never too late to live your best story. For additional resources or to find out about how you can work with Carrie directly, visit CarrieRowan.com for more details.